Okay, we got the boat all vacuumed and cleaned out. The motor bracket is all put together. I used uh, a tube of 3M5200 I had left over to glue that together. I know it's a little overkill and expensive, but to me it's not a waste. If it's something you have sitting around, you're not going to use for anything else. So I just used what I had available. Uh, right now we are just marking the floors. So we know where the joists are and the stringers, so we can screw it together and then numbering each one of the panels so that we'll know how to put this thing back together once we get the floor out. I already numbered the sides and took those out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull the floor out. I'm going to come back through on these corners where the gaps are. You see over here, you can see there's a gap running along there. And then if we go back here to the back of the boat, you can see there's a gap out there. We're going to fill those all with thickened epoxy. After we get the floor pulled up and vacuumed out, but then you're going to put the styrofoam back down. A little bit of uh, adhesive on it just so it doesn't slide around and make noise underneath the boat. And then uh, we'll put the sides on. So the plan is I'm going to pull out the front half of the boat to this main seam that goes all the way across. Oop, there's that main seam that goes all the way across. I don't know where it was. Uh, stack everything in the rear of the boat. We'll do the front of the boat. And I'll also put the thickened epoxy in those two corners in the back because I can get to them easily without having to pull the floor out. And we'll go along from there. This afternoon I'm taking my uh, mud motor to my brother-in-law's house. I have a 16 horse Briggs on it right now. It has a rear oil leak on it. I picked up a 27 horse Kohler which I was really happy about until I found out it is a taper fit output shaft instead of a straight output shaft and it has no thrust bearings in it. It's designed for a non-thrust load so we have to figure out if there's thrust bearings in the mud motor itself or if they're in the engine. If they are using the thrust bearings in the engine then we're gonna have to figure out how to put a thrust bearing assembly on the mud motor, how to mount that on the bracket and I think I found a place that I can get a a yoke made for a U-joint that uses a taper fit shaft instead of a straight shaft. So that's where we're at, that's where we're at for right now. Uh, signing up. Okay, we have from this seam forward on the floor, caulked and screwed in the place. I'm not gonna call it glued because it's just construction adhesive. Uh, the front is caulked and screwed in the place and the side up to here and here is done. I'll finish the back half and the sides either tonight or tomorrow afternoon. Heading over to my brother-in-law's house. He's going to help me uh, do the engine swap now on the mud motor. So that's all I got for today. Okay, we are laying down the last of the flooring right now. As you can see, I just have a few boards underneath there to shim everything up. I left that one empty because so I might uh, end up cutting that board back out around the edge of the foam. Taking that foam out and making that more of a sump for the drainage, but I'll have to see because I don't know if I want to drill through the bottom board for drainage. So that can always be modified later. But we got the lines of the subfloor caulking down. I hope I have another line right along the edge here. That one get covered up by this point a little bit. We're basically putting them down, running screws in, and then we're going to do the same thing, put a bead of caulk down the sides here. Run screws in there, the same thing with the two backboards over here. So that's where, where we are at now. And uh, we'll get these glued and screwed into place and then we'll go on to the next fun and exciting thing. Here's a little trick you can do instead of drawing lines all the way across. What I'll do is I'll hook the tape measure on this side on the outer edge there. And then I'll lay the tape measure on the outer edge over here. Remember to make sure that the tape is on the outer edge and not, I'm sorry, that the tape is on the outer edge and not just the tape measure and then you just go right along just inside the tape measure across and you got your screws on a line for that uh, center beam. Okay the entire floor and sides are glued and screwed into place. 
we are trying something new this time. Uh, a couple of those white spots you see were the leftover paneling adhesive that I used. Then I went out and got some of this uh, PL500 landscape caulk. I had, when I had laid all this out, I had just laid all the wood in, and some of these side pieces were sitting up a little bit. Or these side pieces here were not all the way down, so when I cut the pieces for the top, they left gaps at the bottom. So instead of spending a ton of, or wasting a ton of uh, thickened epoxy or thickened polyester resin, because I think I might do these seams of polyester, but I'll get into that later. So wasting a bunch of resin and thickener filling these gaps in, I decided just to fill them in with caulk. So that is where we are at now. I have to go catch an escape chicken, so later. <laughs>